Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be talking about the odd stoppage in the Michael Venom Page versus David Rickles fight at Bellator 200. So let's just get it off and start it. So let me just first clear up some things or just clarify some things. David Rickles is by no means no can. If you actually watch MMA and keep up with Bellator and watch his fights and you actually can judge talent like I can pretty well, since I watch a good amount of MMA, I'm not going to say I'm the, the best or some expert, but I think I'm pretty good at examining talent. I think David Rickles is a solid fighter. You could say he's the best test for um Mike Vinopage yet, possibly. And some people were saying that, some people were saying that, but one thing for sure I know he's not a can. I think he dropped, he could be a, a top 20 in, in the UFC at lightweight, really. I think he would be do fair there. I think he would be respectable. You dropped him in at the, try to drop him at the high end. I think he would get beat out of UFC. We try to drop him in like the mid or low end. He could he could swim. I think so. He's he's definitely a respectable fighter. I think Venom Page is that good at what he does. You could say he's not this, not that, and you might be right. But as far as his striking, I think it's legit. His confusion is legit. His showboating is legit. That's what he does, and he does a good job of throwing people off with, at what he does. So to sum up the fight, he pretty much toyed with um, David Rickles a bit. You could say toy or his strategy is his fighting style. And it threw David Rickles off. David Rickles wasn't able to land. He kind of cornered him at times, but um, Venom Page was able to circle out, land strikes, keep his composure, stay comfortable. Never looked, looked like he was pretty much sparring and playing around with him the whole time. But kept his composure, did what he had to do, and made David Rickles look bad throughout. Dropped him towards the end with a blitz, straight caught him. Sat him down, almost caught him with a follow punch. David Rickles got back up, made it to the um I think then the bell ended shortly after that when David Rickles got back up with his feet. Then early on in the second round, he pretty much got caught with the same blitz again. It didn't drop him. But bust him open. He got taunted by Michael Venom Page, and then he pretty much waved it off and like, I'm done. So I think what's really was the reason why Dave Rickles quit, because Dave Rickles is actually a tough fighter. He doesn't quit unless he gets knocked out. Well, actually you don't get quit if you get knocked out. Well, he doesn't Really, the fight doesn't really end with him until you knock him out or really stop him. He's not a quitter by any means, but that just showed you it's something about Venom Page that he does. He makes people look bad. You could like, like, even look at Ricky Rainey. Ricky Rainey came to UFC for whatever reason. They allowed him in the UFC. He fought a pretty solid world champion, several time world champion, Wushu fighter, and Muslim Salikov. And he was actually outlanding Muslim Salikov, looked big for the weight class. Was, I think, was pretty much winning until he got caught. I think it was the second or third round. So he's not, Ricky Rainey's not okay. And he fought um, Douglas Lima in. That's the one that was the Bellator champion, not Diego Lima, not to be confused. Went to decision with Douglas Lima. And when, when Venom Page fought him at the time, he, he pretty much embarrassed um, Ricky Rainey worse than anybody has ever embarrassed Ricky Rainey. Ricky Rainey usually like a respectable fighter, looks solid, looks decent size, decent shape, wore around a skill set. But against Venom Page, Venom Page made him look like, look small, frail, weak, look unsure of himself. And he made him look like a, a can off the street. That's how Venom Page fights. You try to strike with him, unless you're pretty much in comparable level of striking, he'll make you look very bad. Or unless you choose not to engage, like some of the opponents that made it to the decision with Venom Page, because he relies on making you look bad and you're falling for his counter and following his game plan. But you don't want to fight. You choose not to fight and choose to survive, then you can make him look bad. Well, or at least make him not look as dangerous or look as effective. For sure, not as effective. But you're not only not trying to fight because he relies on counters. You're not trying to give him anything to present anything from the counter, of course he's going to look not as flashy or as good. But it's, when in the Rickles fight, Rickles tried to be aggressive at times. Pretty much the whole fight tried to be aggressive. He tried to get in his face, tried to land shots, but he couldn't land nothing. He tried to throw things, he was way off. And then, he, like I said, he got stopped and got, um. I think the reason why he got stopped in the way he did or he quit in the way he did, I think it's frustrating because a lot of times when you're fighting regular fighters or you're fighting normal fighters, you're just fighting. It's not no bunch of show buddy. You're not missing by that much. You're having illegal landing shots here and there. Or if you're not landing shots, you get shots, you're getting hit. And it's like, you're, but you're like pretty much fighting on instincts. I think when you fight someone like Venom Page, or you can say maybe Anderson Silva, or well, really, I'm going to say Venom Page and Anderson Silva, a lot of times they get you frustrated. So the good thing about fighting or training, you train so you get that, pretty much that ultra instinct, like Dragon Ball Z reference, or Dragon Ball Super reference, where you um pretty much a lot of times you're fighting on instinct. You're not thinking about your cardio as much. You're not thinking about which your shot you're doing, your reactions, because your training has trained you to do these shots, and it makes you fast and make you swifter. You don't worry about the damage much. You're not really feeling this stuff as much because your body's reacting. It's in like it's on autopilot almost. You're reacting. Your reactions are faster because you trained it. You're not thinking about every single shot. Your body's reacting on its own almost, 
or maybe you're subconsciously brain and subconsciously doing it. So it's not like you're physically like, oh, I got to throw a jab. Oh, I got to do a straight. I got to do a hook. Oh, I got to move. I got to duck. Your body sometimes just starts doing that. But when somebody is frustrating you in the way he, he is and, and pretty much countering you in the way he is, and also to the point where it seems like it's in, like there's nothing you can do in this having sex. It's like he started thinking, dang, I'm feeling this cut. My eyes bleeding. I got dropped. Matter of fact, I don't want to get put on this highlight reel. I'm getting tired. I'm getting worn out. I'm getting embarrassed. Like pretty much, this if I ain't going nowhere. Pretty much, he caught, got caught with the same sequence in the first round. In the second round, he like the first shot round could have knocked me out. The second, the, in the, the same sequence could have knocked me out in the second round. All I see is this fight continues. I'm probably gonna get caught by the same sequence again and get knocked out. So what's left for me to fight about? So he just quit. So I think the frustration along with where he saw the fight was going, he probably saw all these different ways the fight could end and all the way ending and him getting knocked out in highlight real fast. And he's like, I'm done. I'm busted up. I don't need to take no more damage. I'm done. So that pretty much just sums it up. I think Ben Page is a solid fighter. I wish he would go a little bit faster as far as progression, but he knows his own timeline. He knows his own where he wants to go with his career. So if, say if he went on the fast track, as soon as he came in like four years after fighting, he went in for the title shot, say he lost, then people would be talking trash about he was all hype. But say he goes on the trajectory he's going on now, and he takes like maybe a year, maybe two more years, then he knocks out Roy McDonald, Douglas Lima, and Andre Koroskov, and John Fish, and then whoever anybody else thinks he can't beat. Then people are like, they will forget all about how long it took him. So I guess he knows his path. He knows his training. He knows when he's ready for this and when he's not. I want to see him in the UFC. I think if he already with his striking, he could be a top-level fighter in the UFC. He could be a champion in the UFC. But if he his grappling improves, his takedown defense and all that stuff, he could get at least half of where his striking is. I think he could be he could go far in the UFC. For sure. Legendary status. Maybe a little bit of hype there, but certainly will be a respectful fighter. Definitely on that level and striking already. So that's about all I got to say. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and come back for more videos. Peace.